Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our 11th annual investment manager webinar. It's great to have you with us. Uh, we find this is a really efficient way to share information about NEPC and tell you the things that work, we're working on uh, specifically around manager research. Uh, we view the manager community as uh, really important partners for us for the success of our clients and for the success of NEPC. So uh, we want to engage with everyone in the manager community, make sure you know what's going on at NEPC, make sure you know the best way to work with us uh, when you do well in delivering strong returns for our clients, NEPC looks good for recommending you and our clients are happy because they've got great investment results. And that only happens through a ton of communication uh, ongoing due diligence and uh, and good transparency on both sides. So we appreciate the way that we've been able to partner with so many of you over the years uh, and look forward to continuing to do so. Today, uh, I'm, I'm Tim McCusker, Chief Investment Officer, joined by Sarah Samuels, our Director of Investment Manager Research, and we're also joined by Will Ford, a Principal and Senior Consultant in our public fund practice I mean, among his many responsibilities, also uh, the senior leader in driving our diverse manager engagement. I'll talk about a quick NEPC update, give you a market outlook of where we see things and, and how we're recommending client portfolios should be shaped. Sarah will run, run through a research coverage update, tell you about some of the search activity we had over the last year and some key initiatives. And then we'll wrap up with Will talking about our diverse manager engagement and we'll leave some time for questions at the end. Uh, so, from an NEPC perspective, uh, clearly, like like most businesses, we dealt with the challenges of uh, of the pandemic last year and uh, adjusted to a work from home environment. Uh, as you can see, I'm in the office today. Our our office is open on a voluntary basis, uh, though very small attendance. We're looking at a September reopening. I imagine for many of you, that that's probably the target. Uh, but from an overall business perspective, a, a very successful 2020. Uh, continue to advise to a variety of client types. We think that's a real differentiator for NEPC, the way that we work with so many different clients and that we can be a leader in the consulting world of each of those client types. That helps us be a better consultant because we learn some of the best practices across those, uh, across those different business lines. Uh, we continue to be completely employee owned um, and we advise over 400 clients at this point. So uh, continued slow and steady success for any PC. That's that's what we like. Uh, we we, we want to be uh, leaders in in the world in which we work, uh, but we want to do it in a way that's sustainable for our clients. We we continue to have the same message when we're out there talking to new clients and uh, and in the way that we work with our clients today. Uh, we want them to have the resources of a large firm advising over a trillion dollars in assets having the scale to have a 60 person research team to have expertise in all the various areas of investment markets, uh, but also to have that boutique approach of understanding each client's unique needs, uh, being able to have segment expertise across corporate clients, healthcare clients, public and Taft-Hartley funds, endowments, foundations, uh, private wealth, uh, clients, we want to have that that boutique approach so clients feel like they're getting that specialized service that they should that they should expect uh, to have to meet their customized needs. In terms of what we're seeing from a market outlook perspective, I'll quickly hit on just what we're seeing for concerns for clients. This is from Greenwich Associates, their annual survey. Uh, you can see that. COVID-19 really just amplified many of the concerns that were already a focus for clients. Um, the, the bars here on the larger chart or over the last few years, and really it's a focus on asset allocation, risk management, trying to meet those long-term funding needs. Regardless of client type, those are major concerns, and, and that's where we end up spending a lot of our time with clients focused on helping them build a really robust portfolio that can withstand different economic environments um, and help them meet their long-term needs. All of these other things on there are still important, whether it's manager selection, uh, liability management, if it's a corporate client, um, or all the other internal aspects that matter so much for a client to have a good decision-making process. So we're working with them throughout all of these areas, but you can see the focus continues to be on getting that asset allocation right, 
having the right risk posture for portfolios. And those concerns, those conversations lead to activity over time. And I think what you see here is, is probably pretty consistent with what's been in place for several years now. Uh, on the second line, you can see a further move in U.S. equities towards passive, uh, probably swapping out on, on active managers. Um, and then moving down a little bit, we see uh, a decline in multi-asset and hedge funds. We've certainly seen that for several years. And the biggest bars on here are in the private space, private equity and private debt. We we're working with clients uh, on an ongoing basis to continue to build out private equity programs. And often when new clients are coming to us, particularly on the discretionary side, it's because of that specialization and expertise that we have in the private market space. So that will continue to be a major focus for us. That aligns with some of our overall views. I'll first talk about our key market themes. These four themes are meant to reflect uh, broad influences across global markets that are uh, influencing market pricing and driving sentiment across the world. And you'll see the dominant themes right now continue to be the trajectory of the virus, um, a more positive trajectory now, especially here in the US, as that vaccine rollout continues and the economy continues to reopen. Uh, you can see a lot of that is largely priced in with some new pricing in of perhaps some inflation risks with rates rising a little bit over the last quarter or so. Permanent interventions is a multi-year theme focused on the fact that monetary authorities around the world already have rates at zero or negative in certain parts of the world, uh, can't lower rates to stimulate in the way that they used to. They can continue to buy bonds, but there's only so much that monetary authorities can do. And so what's more likely going forward is more fiscal stimulus. We've certainly seen that in a major way in the U.S., where it's essentially wartime-like deficit, something that most of us in our investing lives have never experienced. But in some way, shape, or form, we expect this to continue uh, and, and expect the path going forward to be more fiscal involvement from the U.S. Um, and other governments around the world. Globalization backlash and China transitions uh, are still very important themes, though they continue to be a little bit more on the back burner over the last year with virus trajectory and permanent interventions playing, uh, playing the most prominent roles. That idea of permanent interventions means that policy overall will be easy and it, it sets up a pretty favorable outlook for risky assets. So as we've seen for the last several years, that support will be there and the economy will continue to do well if that support is there. And so in general, it leads us to a view of a slightly higher risk posture for our clients. So we've been modestly increasing equity targets as a result of that, while recognizing that getting that policy right is really hard and there's downside risks. So we wanna make sure that portfolios have adequate liquidity to handle those adverse scenarios and that they're prepared for a wide range of outcomes and new ranges of outcomes that we haven't been used to. So one thing we're looking at is increasing exposure to inflation hedging assets as that starts to increase as a risk, but also having an allocation to treasuries to have that liquidity source and have that downside protection in portfolios. So to the extent that uh, you're hearing from clients that we're doing some of these things, like taking a little bit more risk on the equity side, expect that it's also balanced out with uh, with that ballast of treasuries or tips in the portfolio to have that, uh, that balance across different economic environments. So with that, I will go off camera here and I will turn it to Sarah to talk about our research coverage and process. Excellent. Thanks so much, Tim. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Samuels. I oversee our investment research team. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, so I'm going to give an update first on our research team. And on this page, we'll talk about two things. Um, one is the new additions to our investment team over the last year or year plus. And the other is a, a restructuring of the marketable securities research team, um, which I'll talk about. Um, so we have nearly 60 investment professionals reporting up to Tim. Um, and we have made a number of new hires in the last year um, on, the, on the manager research side. 
each of whom we're really thrilled to have added to our team, some great talent that we were able to bring over. I'll go through each of those people so that you know who to contact, and then we'll also show you um, on the next slide um, everybody's area of coverage within marketable securities. So some of the folks I would highlight, um, we about a year ago hired Alec Rappaport um, to work on our fixed income strategies, and, and he joined us from Mercer. He was a great senior hire. Uh, we hired Alex Rickles, who covers small and smid caps and target date funds. He came to us from another consulting firm. Rob Brittenbach, who covers liquid real assets and mid caps and flex equity. He came to us from Marquette. Cadmiel Anoje covers global macro and GAA. He joined us from Anco. Uh, Elizabeth Miller covers private real assets with our team as an analyst. And Raj Pelikar joined us to, to cover structured credit and emerging markets debt from Interactive Brokers. We're also really excited to welcome Don Smith, um, Don Swift to the team. Um, she's the Director of Research Operations. She joined us from Investment. So um, really strong team. We're feeling really good about where we are. Um, in terms of the restructuring of, of teams within marketable securities, so that's long only and hedge fund strategies, um, the, the most important thing for you to know is that this means no change whatsoever for you all. It's an internal restructuring in terms of how we think about the world, and it's really reflective of, how, of the work that we've already been doing. Um, so in the fall of last year, um, Tim O'Connell became the director of equities, and that is long only equities as well as equity hedge funds. And Delari Pancholi became director of credit and multi-asset, again, long only and hedge fund strategies. And the reason for that is it's really memorializing something that we've been doing for some time now, which we refer to as a beta group construct. We think it's really important to think holistically across the liquidity spectrum of investment offerings in a certain part of the market. And so this is really helping us to do that. And we think it'll lead to, to even better results for our clients. So this slide will be helpful for you um, if you're if you're thinking about who you need to contact um, for, for different asset classes. We'll make this available later. If we flip to the next page, um, we'll talk a little bit about our manager research process. This slide should be familiar to most of you. When we're looking at new managers or existing managers, we're really looking to answer three questions. Um, and, and that's kind of this is kind of a summary of this page. We want to know, have you done it? Um, have you demonstrated the ability to add alpha? Um, can you keep doing it? So what is your investment thesis and your mode and your edge? And then who's going to do it? We really need to understand deeply the organization and the people touching the money. Um, in the last 18 months or so, we have enhanced our investment process. And I did talk about this in our call last year um, at this time with the manager community. But we're really going deeper if we flip to the next page in two areas in our diligence. We believe we're going deeper than um, others out there and, and, and deeper than we have before. So you may be getting some different questions from our researchers than you, you have in the past. And those two areas where we're going deeper are on the left side, uh, quantitative analysis, and on the right side, alignment of incentives. Um, so on the quantitative analysis side, we've introduced some new tools to really peel back the onion, use second level thinking and understand um, how value was created, whether there are factor tilts, um, and really understanding if, it, if the track record is attributable to luck or skill, and if you can continue that going forward. On the right side, the alignment of incentives. Um, again, this is an area where you might see some more questions from our researchers about the governance structure of your organization, about the team, succession risk, um, alignment of incentives as it relates to terms, um, product proliferation is something we're going to be trying to understand. Um, so, so thank you in advance for working with our researchers on these topics. It's really important that we understand your, your firm um, and your team. Um, this all ties into two important topics that I'll discuss later, which is um, due, due diligence questionnaires and fees. But first, I'll talk about search activity. So, um, yeah, we can flip forward through this page. That's just a little background on the investment framework. So in terms of 2020 search activity, our clients conducted 593 searches in 2020. Um, and this represented $29 billion of assets being invested. The number of searches was down slightly year over year, but the dollars placed rose year over year. Um, roughly, though, this was in line with 2017, 2018, and 2019 search activity, both in terms of number of searches and dollars invested. 
we really didn't see COVID deeply impact search activity in any way, um, but these numbers can move around a bit for other reasons as well, whether it's large clients who may swing the numbers or manager activity. Um, some themes, and Tim alluded to this earlier, have been in place for the last four years or so. Um, and this includes high search activity in international equities, in global equities and emerging market equities. And if we tie back to that Greenwich data that we showed outlining institutional investors expected asset allocation shifts in the next three years, I think this reflects that trend real time. Fixed income search activity hasn't changed all that much. Uh, in private equity, we continue to see um, lots of activity. But unlike the public markets search activity, which is a function of some other things like clients ramping up, um, clients reacting to manager news or making portfolio changes, private equity is really it's a different cadence. It's a function of clients ramping up PE exposure. Um, but we have seen many clients looking to put more dollars to work in private. The next page just shows a historical perspective of where clients are focusing their time in terms of searches um, across time year by year. Um, we like to share with, with our um, counterparts in the asset management space what our key initiatives are so that you can have a sense for where we're, where our priorities are and how to best engage with us. Um, the first key initiative is you know, something that, I, as I said, has been underway for about 18 months now, which is implementing the enhancements of our investment approach. Um, I described it a little bit earlier, but it's a little more formalized than, it, than, than maybe what you've seen. Um, and we are going deeper in a couple of areas. And so what that means for you is that there may be some rating changes as a result of, of this um, investment approach as we roll it off out across all of our strategies. Um, and that's just going to be sort of organic and based on what, what we are finding as we, we underwrite strategies throughout the year. Um, the second is that we've reviewed our coverage approach and we created a client strategy coverage team. And so this team was created to do diligence and oversight of our three rated, four rated and five rated strategies. And that team is composed of Steve, Gar Steve Gargano, John Shanklin and Istvan Mezaros. Um, the researchers that we showed on that um, org chart a couple pages up are responsible for one and two rated strategies. Um, we are also shifting more to a DDQ approach to gather information and updates from you on your, on your um, organization. So thank you in advance for, for filling those DDQs out when they come to you. And then finally, we mentioned this last year, but we've moved to a more nimble approach to new ideas. Historically, we've sort of waited until a netting and vetting cycle um, was up for each asset class. Um, and now we are um, looking for great ideas and we may upgrade or downgrade strategies um, any, at, at any time based on what we're seeing. Um, fees are also another big focus for us at NEPC. Um, Neil Sheff is spearheading our initiatives to make sure that our fees are appropriate for each strategy. We have over 200 strategies that are offering preferential pricing for NEPC clients right now. And our priority really is to partner with investment managers to structure the most economically favorable arrangement possible for our clients. We recognize that fee compression is hard for investment managers, um, as it is for any PC too. Um, and we want your firm to be able to operate and you know, be profitable. Um, but there are ways that, that we, that this trend is mostly being driven by asset owners, um, as I'm sure you are all well aware. So we've had great success working with investment managers to come up with creative fee structures to align the interest of the managers with clients while still allowing you to run your business effectively. Um, so you, you may be hearing from Neil and, and other research team members this year on this front. If we flip forward one slide, this just summarizes the, some, you know, many of the components of our investment due diligence process. Um, there's a lot on here, which I won't go through. I think the, the thing to highlight is that bottom right chart here, the enhancements that we made in um, the, the COVID and post-COVID era. So in terms of getting comfortable with the work that we're doing, the recommendations that we're making in a virtual world and not being able to sit across from and in, in the same room as the investors that we're recommending, 
Um, we've been doing, uh, you know, video conference calls, which have actually had some benefits. We've had, it's been easier to schedule time with more uh, research, with more investment professionals and back office professionals at firms. Um, and, and we've been able to get even, you know, um, per perhaps more access because not people aren't on the road. We're doing additional reference calls when we're underwriting new investment and, and, and potentially background checks. I um, want to thank all of you for the extra efforts that you've made to ensure that we can get the information that we need and have access to people. Um, Tim mentioned earlier that we are you know, um, targeting a September return to the office. Of course, there's lots of data and you know, information that we need to continue to monitor as it relates to vaccinations and, and virus trajectory. But um, we, uh, you know, until then, certainly until September, we aren't meeting with managers in the office in person just yet. And then um, sustainability is another important initiative um, for us. It's a, certainly an important trend in the investment industry, um, and that's true for both clients and NEPC. We are committed to ESG integration, um, and we have been for some time. We've developed an ESG rating system, which is now integrated into our overall research process. Um, and so you should have at this point already heard from our research teams over the last couple of years um, in terms of understanding your approach, in each investment manager's approach to ESG and how you're integrating that into your overall firm and the strategies. Um, so thank you in advance for your support here. Um, and for those of you that want to reach out to NEPC to discuss our ESG efforts further, Chrissy Pelletier and Delari Pancholi, lead our impact committee. So now I'd like to invite Will Ford to, to join and talk about another incredibly important key initiative, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thanks, everyone. And Will, as you're taking over here, I neglected to mention that we will take some questions at the end. So uh, if you do have a question, feel free to fire it into the chat box there, and we'll try to leave a few minutes. So Will, back to you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Sarah. Um, before jumping into any slides here, um, first and probably the most important thing I wanted to emphasize is how much of an emphasis our client uh, continue to put on all things diversity. We don't believe this is a trend or a fad, uh, but something candidly that has been building for a number of years and is likely something that's here to stay. And as a result, you know, internally, we've continued to devote the appropriate resources to finding quality diverse managers but also evaluating diversity across all of our recommended managers, whether they're diverse or not. So my goal today is just to quickly provide some color for the group on how diverse firms can best engage with any PC, but also highlight some of our DEI efforts that will likely impact most, if not all of you on this call. Uh, so starting with this page, uh, we've included just a quick reminder on the way in which we define diversity at NEPC across both diverse owned and diverse led managers. It's fairly self-explanatory, but of note, we have seen some increased interest from clients to view diversity not only through the lens of ownership, but also based on who's actually managing their assets. This focus on diverse managed strategies, so those that are managed by diverse decision makers or uh, investment teams, it seems to have increased uh, dramatically over the past few years, and we continue to work with clients to find uh, managers who might fit uh, that, that category. Moving to the next page, this is just a quick summary of our diverse manager policy, um, which was launched back in September of 2019. You can see a few of the main goals we have as part of that policy on this page. But for the purposes of today, we wanted to focus really more on the multiple pathways for asset managers to engage with any PC and our clients. I think most of you on uh, today's webinar probably understand our standard process and ultimately how to get onto our focus placement list. But we wanted to offer additional avenues um, that could also be useful, particularly for diverse and emerging managers. And the first of which is uh, our discovery platform. The discovery platform represents investment strategies that might appeal uh, to a smaller subset of clients that have a higher risk tolerance or higher return goals. 
Some of these strategies may also have portfolio concentration or higher illiquidity or lower assets under management or even shorter track records or maybe even elements of all of those things. Yet, they still really represent a strong opportunity for clients looking for that specific type uh, of an investment or exposure. Our expectation is that we'll likely underwrite about 10 ideas across that platform a year. So we certainly think it can be a useful tool for select uh, diverse and emerging managers who might share some of those characteristics. Secondly, uh, we are one of the first major consulting firms to formally rate emerging manager of managers and fund of funds across both public and private markets. We rely pretty heavily on those relationships to help identify and screen for just diverse managers across uh, the landscape, but also those of high conviction. So for those of you who are part of those uh, emerging manager, manager or fund to fund uh, platforms, we do welcome conversations on potentially building out more of a direct relationship with any PC. And last but not least, uh, we continue to leverage our flexible uh, rating system to allow for non-focused placement list managers to engage with our clients. So for those of you who are not currently on our focused placement list and might have an alter alternative rating, you know, potentially a three or a neutral rating, there is additional flexibility for us to include you in manager searches if it comes based off of the client's direction. So again, just a handful of different ways in which you know, diverse and emerging, but candidly all asset managers can better engage with us um, and our clients. Uh, lastly, just moving to the next page here, um, we wanted to uh, provide you with a sense of what's on the horizon. So just moving to the next page here, um, we're really excited to release at the end of this month our DEI progress report. Just a quick summary of our DEI efforts across our workforce internally, but then also some of the things that we're doing outside of the walls of NPC across diverse manager research. Uh, secondly, we're really excited about our September 14th Equitable Manager Participation Day. Uh, last year, we had over 100 diverse managers participate in that workshop where they were able to hear about what we look for in high conviction managers, um, some of the things in areas that we're looking at, and hear directly from senior NEPC researchers. To the extent that you have interest in participating in that event, uh, we ask that you reach out to diverse managers at NEPC.com for some additional information there. Last but not least, this will likely be something that impacts the majority of folks, um, to going back to the next, uh, to the prior page, uh, on the webinar. And this is the launch of our diversity questionnaire and proprietary uh, diversity ratings for all investment managers. Our hope is that we can start uh, on those ratings at the end of this year and that will likely be focused more on a smaller subset of managers, and then we'll likely broaden out that number to a larger group throughout uh, 2022. Uh, our rating will focus on firm and strategy level data to inform the strength or weaknesses of DEI efforts at uh, the investment management firms that we do recommend to clients. And for those of you who have engaged, engaged with us across what we did on the ESG ratings, it will be something very similar. A questionnaire with some high level um, questions around firm and strategy level data that we ultimately will use to provide a rating to allow our clients to evaluate how diverse or non-diverse all of their managers are. So with that, that was a fast and furious summary of some of the um, things that we're focused on on the DEI space, and I'll stop there and pass things back over to Tim and Sarah. Thank Great. you, Will. Thanks. Thanks, Will. Great job with that. Uh, we do have some questions coming in. We'll uh, we'll hit some of those, and then uh, and then have a wrap up. 
so a couple of questions related to fixed income, one on the private side and then one on the public side. Uh, the first is on uh, the private equity search activity where you saw a big number, almost 150 uh, placements last year. How much of that is, is private debt versus private equity? I don't have the numbers in front of me, uh, but I, I would say it's probably around a third of that activity is is private debt. It is very meaningful, and we're proud of uh, being leaders in that space. We were early to evaluate private debt strategies, uh, and because of that, we were able to get, coming back to one of Sarah's points, we were able to get favorable terms with many of these managers uh, that are getting recognized and leaders in that space now, we've got some of the best terms in the consulting industry as a result. So continuing to see that in terms of what type of private debt strategies, that certainly started out as direct lending focused. Um, and that continues to be the case, though we've seen spreads compress in a way that uh, makes that less of a really exciting opportunity right now. So we are seeing it tilt a little bit towards uh, more niche lending opportunities uh, still private in nature, but a little bit more specialized, sometimes asset-backed um, and sometimes outside of the U.S. And then we had a few uh, drawdown type structures, uh, especially from hedge fund type strategies, some structured credit type managers uh, that we would classify as private debt. That opportunity came and went so fast that uh, we only had a few clients get into some of those, but but pretty attractive returns for those that did. In terms of the nature of public fixed income searches, I'd say the way that we are structuring those portfolios is uh, building more of a barbell approach. Uh, so we've been using less uh, multi-sector fixed income and just making sure that we're getting the right kinds of exposures in, uh, in our fixed income allocations. Given that view of adding to equity allocations, we're making sure we have safety in some of that fixed income allocation with a blend of treasuries and tips. Uh, and then if we are still looking for returns, we can find it through some of those multi-sector managers, but really the focus and first move with the amount of equity risk, public and private that is in portfolios, we're starting with making sure we get some treasury and tips allocations in there. Those are often passive, just given the, the limited active management opportunities there. Um, turn it to Sarah here. Uh, Sarah, can you talk about the type of activity that we're seeing? We have, that's another big number on our search activity for non-US equity, global, international, and, and EM equity. Where are we seeing the most activity in that space? Yes. So um, we've seen activity across all, of, all three segments, all three strategy types, from emerging markets to developed non-US to global. Um, I will say that in global equity, we've had a tremendous, our clients have had a tremendous track record there um, and a tremendous experience with the managers that we recommend. Um, and in many of our um, relationships with newer clients, we, we find that global equity is underrepresented. Um, so that is certainly a trend that, that we see. Um, another thing that we've observed is that um, Clients, as we mentioned earlier, ESG and sustainability is becoming much more important to clients, and they want to find managers and strategies that are focused on that to, to a certain extent. Um, and we've actually seen that in global equity, many um, managers are a little ahead of the curve in terms of implementing ESG. So the clients are, are interested in that from a bottom-up standpoint, as well as uh, you know an alpha and return expectation standpoint. Great, thanks, Sarah. And uh, one last question here um, on assessing diversity. Uh, Will, we'll turn to you for this one. How are we assessing diversity for non-US firms uh, and particularly smaller firms? Uh, certainly that's that's something we've got to look at when we're looking at the full roster of, uh, of clients' portfolios. Yeah, it's a good question. And, and candidly, the process, whether it's a US or non-US based firm for us is you know, pretty much the same where we're going to be focused on, you know, does ownership at the firm and across those underrepresented groups uh, that I outlined. Um, one thing that we've uh, heard from clients is that they want to focus on the groups that are currently underrepresented in their market and getting more exposure to them and being partners with them. Um, so, that's essentially how we view the world 
across diverse owned and diverse led firms, whether they're in the US or um, based abroad as well. I would say that our definitions will likely evolve over time um, as the industry does. Um, and right now it doesn't really incorporate from a size perspective any differences. So really focus on, uh, for now, ownership, uh, specifically across the underrepresented groups uh, that we outlined earlier. Great, thanks, Will. Uh, and with that, I think we'll turn to some closing thoughts. Uh, just how best to work with us. Uh, you can go to nepc.com and stay on top of our views. We'll be posting this presentation there. So uh, if you wanna uh, send it around to others at your organization, you can feel free to, to do so. Uh, we, we try to stay on top of markets and post blogs and make sure there's current information for our clients. So you can get a great sense of how we're viewing the world and our, um, our recommendations to clients by uh, looking at the website and getting on our mailing list. Uh, I'd say, as always, being selective with what you're bringing to us. I think if we can focus on the very best ideas uh, and, and go with quality over quantity, that's going to make for more productive meetings on all sides. Sarah mentioned this, uh, the idea of highly competitive pricing. It's, it's so important to our clients that they're getting the best possible pricing. And I think it's a differentiator when managers are stacked up against one another. Uh, when we've got a manager that's showing a preferential NEPC fee, that jumps out at clients and that, that can make a difference when there's similarities, that can be the tie that can get a manager ahead when it, when it comes to the selection process. And then just recognize that uh, we are taking inbound requests from so many folks in the investment manager community. We're doing our best to be responsive, but please understand that we can't take everything, we can't rate everything, uh, and we've got to be efficient with our time. Uh, and you should expect that from us. You should expect that we will get back to you. We will give you feedback. We will tell you what's going on with our clients and where we're seeing opportunities. We'll tell you what our process is. Uh, and we'll tell you what we don't like. We'll tell you what we do, what we do like. Uh, we'll do our best to get you that information in a timely way. Uh, but we will have to be selective in, in anything that we're doing so that we can go deep on the managers that we want to follow and put in client portfolios. Uh, so with that, I want to thank Sarah and Will for joining us today and providing some information. I know we had a couple questions that came in under the wire. Uh, feel free to follow up with one of us and we'll see if we can get you more information on that. Uh, but look forward to continuing to partner with all of our colleagues in the investment manager community in 2021 and beyond and hope everyone has a great rest of the week. Take care. Thank you.